Hello, movie lovers. Welcome to our Fantastic Four spoilers review. As most of you may know, the new Fantastic Four movie has just released today, actually. We're recording this on Friday, August 7th, and I'm here with Gio Ramos and Jake Berlin. I'm Jacob Bartley, and we had the chance of seeing it last night. And for those of you who don't know, spoilers means we're going to get into details about the film. We're going to talk about plot points. We're going to give away all the little details that you don't want to know if you haven't seen the movie. So if you haven't seen it yet, you know, save this video and watch it later. But uh, for now, we're going to jump right into spoilers right from the get-go. So Fantastic Four Reboot, directed by Josh Trank, starring Miles Teller, Kate Mara, Michael B. Jordan, Jamie Bell, Toby Kebbell. Uh, man, I just got to say, before we get started, I was... Looking forward to this movie so much. Great director. Impeccable cast. I have a soft spot in my heart for Fantastic Four. Uh, it's just, you know, I grew up on the old ones, the Tim Story ones. So as a kid, there was something special to me. I do recognize they are not good movies, but I still own them. They're on my shelf. I throw them on as guilty movie pleasures. So I have a deep spot in my heart for Fantastic Four. Just wanted to get that out of the way before we start this. Uh, Jake, how you doing, man? How's it going? Good. How you doing? Uh, yeah, so you saw Fantastic Four yeah. last night. I did. I you did. did. Um, how are you feeling, man? Uh, well, um, I absolutely hated it. Oh, all right, we'll get into it. What's up, <laughs> Gio? What's going on, bro? You, we saw it together last Just night. Just here. How does this movie make you feel? Oh man, I'm full. I've eaten so much, so many of my words in the last 24 hours. I thought you were talking because the pizza we just ate. The pizza too, but <laughs> man, dude. Oh my god, yeah. what a letdown. So let's go round table. We're going to just give our initial thoughts on the movie, and then we're going to get into detail about what we liked about it, what we didn't like about it, and where we think Fantastic Four stands as a franchise with 20th century fox and the x-men universe and where we think that's all headed down i'm gonna go ahead and start i did not hate this movie i liked it but i do recognize it's not a good movie they really messed up especially the second half of the movie i really liked the first half um but i gotta be honest i'm a little heartbroken because I wanted this movie to be good so bad. Like, more than any movie I can remember in recent memory, I wanted it to be great. And it really hurts me that it fell short. And what hurts me even more is that the response it's getting online, it has a 12% or something on Rotten Tomatoes. It's at 9 Yeah, 9%. Everybody I, I follow online is giving it bad reviews. I'm trying to put my fanboyism aside. Like, tr I'm really trying to. There is some good stuff in this movie, guys. I promise you, there is. I really honestly think so. And I think Josh Trank started off with the right idea. And somewhere in between, stuff went wrong. Fox stepped in. I think they ultimately decided what the movie was going to be. And he had no say. So we'll get into that a little later. But just my initial thoughts. I did like the movie, but it's not good. I just don't think it's horrible. Jake, wh what are your initial thoughts on the film? It's horrible. <laughs> well, I, um, hey, can no, I, I mean, with you, Okay, man. so up until the point when they transport to Dimension Z, or Planet Z, whatever the hell you want to call it, um, I was like, okay, yeah, I can, I'm, I'm in now, you know, I'll, I'll go along with it. Uh, I liked what Josh Trank was doing, um, you know, with with some characters, you know, I, I felt like some were very underused and underdeveloped, uh, and I felt like it was kind of going in a direction that I saw it going, I guess, um, but as soon as they hit Planet Zero or Dimension Z or whatever, um, it just fell apart. Someone took a hacksaw to it. And it just... I agree. It blew up. I totally agree. Um, and from there on out, I just... I wasn't into it. It just... And it made me hate the first act. That's what it made me do. It, I I despised it so much that wow. I can't get... I just can't get away from it. Wow. And um, 
you know, I wasn't I wasn't bashing on the movie before I saw it. I, I was very much looking forward to it because some of the trailers were actually really good. But and, and I absolutely love the cast. Um, but to be honest, I kind of walked out how I was expecting to walk out. Wow. I wasn't surprised by my reaction to it. So, um, but I'll get deeper into to what I hated or so didn't we, like we much know you later. Hated the movie. So right. I'll get much All deeper right. into it later. Geo. <clears throat> initial thoughts on the film initial thoughts what the hell 20th century fox seriously oh my god all right this fantastic four like i said in my review it's bad it's bad but it's not completely terrible i wouldn't put it on the same scale as like a same level as a x-men origins wolverine or a Green Lantern starring Ryan Reynolds. I don't think it's that bad, but wow. Uh, you guys pretty much uh, touched on it a little bit when, yeah, like the second half, like what the hell happened? Like I was all into this build up, this uh, introduction, you know, it was great seeing Reed Richards and Ben Grimm, you know, together, their buddies and you know, Reed Richards find, finally finding a place where he belongs, where he can put his talents to good use and all that. And I thought they very poorly brought everyone together, you know, um, to to go and crack interdimension travel. I mean, Michael B. Jordan, you know, he, he sh one minute he's street racing, the next minute he's working on this project. And Victor Von Doom, he just, you know he basically he's only doing this for for sue storm you know and that bothered the hell out of me so i mean the build-up was great the first act uh, the first half of the film i'll say is good and then once they go into that uh what is it called zero planet planet zero, zero. it's originally titled dimension z but oh man the effects i feel like i was watching uh like a 2000 for film like it did the landscape it didn't look all that great i mean it just well, yeah we'll get into detail yeah. about it but, but i mean you were initially you're not satisfied with the movie I'm, I'm not satisfied but it's not completely <laughs> terrible yeah i'll just say that yeah i mean I, everybody's entitled to their own opinion uh, you know there's no denying that but i honestly do not think this movie is bad is as bad as you guys are making it out to be or anyone else online is making it out to be before we jump into into detail about the the positives and negatives i just want to say so do you think this movie is worse than x-men origins wolverine yes really okay well you said it's no x-men origins wolverine or but Green Lantern. that's right now i could go watch it again and change yeah my mind. all right so so X-Men Origins Wolverine has a 38% on Rotten Tomatoes. Green Lantern has a 26. I don't think this movie is even nearly close to as bad as those movies. I, I think the problem is critics are too reactionary. They, I think they, a lot of them were expecting to not like this movie, so they went in with a negative attitude. They didn't leave their, their pre-assumptions at the door. They went in negative. They watched the movie with a negative mindset, and they left the movie with a negative mindset. And they're so reactionary. Oh, the movie was horrible, bad review. And I don't understand, like, I on, do you think this movie's worse than uh, Amazing Spider-Man 2? Yes. I disagree. And Amazing Spider-Man 2 has a 53%. Uh, you think it's worse than, well, see, like, Iron Man 2 is considered a bad movie, but it has a 72%. So I don't think critics are consistent, honestly. But I think some of that has to do with Fox. Lifting the embargo 12 hours before yeah. the movie's no, release. That's, you're absolutely right. They, and they I didn't just, believe in their own movie, so why should critics? It's like... Okay, do you think this movie's worse than the previous two Fantastic Four movies? Um, No, but it's close. So they Fantastic Four 1 has a 27%, and Rise of the Silver Surfer, Silver Surfer because has a 37%. It was a different time. Well, And they go review these later, huh? Like... Not, in my opinion, none of these Fantastic Four movies, more so to the originals, haven't come close to what the Fantastic Four are about. Oh, no. I agree with that, but I don't think this movie is as bad. You guys get it. You know, I've said it a million times. It sounds like a broken record, but... So, um, let's start with you, Gio. Uh, so, what things... 
we know you hated the movie. Uh, what things actually worked in the film for you? Um, like I said, the the backstory between Reed Richards and Ben Grimm that was great. You know, um, seeing them as kids come together in their teens and uh, all the way up until the point where uh, you know they part ways and Reed Richards goes and works on with you know people who are as smart as him. I did like how he um, when he brought Ben Grimm back and like you started this with me buddy so you're gonna go with me on this oh, travel. Oh yeah. That was a nice thing and that further showed their uh, their um, you know friendship and all that stuff. Um, what else? God, this is tough. Oh man, uh, I thought the powers looked pretty good um, when they actually showed. Them. Yeah, Kate barely Mara, got you know, any use of their powers. flying around doing the whole invisible shield and all that kind of stuff. That looked cool. It looked cool. I wanted like right there, you could see like okay, there's potential here with these uh, with with you know the, these characters and 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 once they had their powers and all that kind of stuff. Seeing the thing and uh, Reed Richards kind of well, they didn't really battle. Not it was at just all. you saw you saw Reed Richards kind of com combat with his uh, stretch yeah, warp space time abilities. powers. Yeah, I thought that was good. Um, I didn't have a problem with any of the performances. I don't think any of these uh, cast members. I don't think it's any of their fault. You know, they were directed what to do and. I thought they, uh, you know, did a good job. Um, the right people were cast for this film. Um, that's it. That's <laughs> all I have right now. No, that's, that's fine. Uh, what about you, Jake? I know there wasn't much that you liked. Was there anything you liked in this movie? Kate Mara. That's it. I well, there's more. No, I mean, but I, know, I think but you like her. I there's uh, even though I was pretty bored watching the movie every time she was on screen there's just something about her yeah that she has I just, a like, lot of charisma there's, there's a gravitas towards her mm -hmm. it's um i'm extremely happy she's cast as the character uh and you know i mean but again i thought miles teller was good um michael b jordan i thought he was a great choice for the character oh yeah i thought jamie bell was a great choice uh for ben Grimm. um but they were give they did what they were given they were able to do with what they were given from the script and the direction um i mean like i said earlier that the f the first half of the movie was was decent um there were some definitely redeemed quality like you said the backstory between uh ben and reed w was really good but the execution was i'll get in that later but uh the effects the power effects anyway were cool um I I'm, I really like the way they designed Johnny Storm. Um, oh yeah, and, and how he flame like how he looked in the flame. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because he had the dark eyes, the dark mouth, and uh, it looked really cool. And and Sue Storm's powers were cool. The thing looked awesome. He looked really cool, much better than the original thing from the originals. Oh yeah, he Michael looked. Chickless. He yeah. looked like uh, uh, a the thing from the comics i will oh, say yeah. that uh the direction trank was taking in the beginning um uh, was what i wanted to see the whole um the monster like they're monsters like it's the monster aspect of it like you even, even if you watch throughout there's a scene in the movie um there's creepy music going on yeah, and I it felt that. like a monster movie. i really love that i wanted that throughout the entire thing the mm -hmm. entire thing these, yeah. Yeah. these kids or the well these people are they're essentially monsters to all these people. It's like, Definitely. why not run with that? Um, there were redeemable, redeemable things, but it, it was very minor for me. So, Well, like I said, I enjoyed the first half of the movie quite a bit. I thought uh, <clears throat> the Reed Richards and Ben Grimm relationship, I thought it was pretty – I even thought it was executed well in the first half. But, I mean, the once they get their powers, it's kind of when the movie all falls apart and – you kind of lose that feeling you got from the beginning of the movie with their relationship. But I did, I, I felt the loyalty there, honestly. Um, I thought Michael B. Jordan was perfect for Johnny Storm because, you know, Chris Evans, I actually like Chris Evans as Johnny Storm too in the old Fantastic Four movies, but- um, He was the was best a, part. He was, and but it was, the whole movie was over the top, but, and so was Johnny Storm in that movie. 
he was he was still a hothead, you know, still a rebel, but it was subtle, you know. He so I liked that and I really liked those horror there was a lot of horror elements, like monster movie elements in this movie, and I really dug it. I if you notice when in that last battle scene, even though the battle scene was horrible at the end, that last battle scene when they're fighting Doctor Doom and uh you kind of see he's like winning the battle, you know, and like he's I don't know what he does, but he he hits Reed Richards and he starts like like his powers. He takes start. his elastic bands off and he starts because oh, he hasn't been able to control himself yet. Oh, okay. So he starts like and like <clears throat> when that's happening, you hear that scary music like that, like that that scary music you're talking about. And and when Ben Grimm is like getting attacked by all the other rocks, like you hear that that horror score in the background. And like when they when they first go to the planet Zero and when when they get hit with whatever hit them and gave them their powers, like you see Johnny Storm just all burnt up, like. If they didn't get their powers, it looks like they died that way. Like, Reed Richards died all stretched out. Johnny Storm died, got burnt to death. Uh, ben, ben Graham, Graham got, got plummeled with rocks. rocks. Yeah. And it, I felt that horror vibe. I felt that scariness. And I think that's what Josh Trank was going for. Unfortunately, I think what happened is... Did you guys see his tweet that yeah. he put out? Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was today or yesterday. Yeah. But, he deleted um, it, by the way. He did? But they wow. Did so he said... Um, a year ago, I had a fantastic version of this. Unfortunately, you'll never see it. Da 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 da. So there was rumors going around that there was trouble on set with the director. I think now that I've seen the movie, I think it was true, and I think at some point Fox just put it all together, edited it, and put together what they wanted, and that's the final product. So I think that's what happened. But um, I'll also get into that a little later. Ben Grimm, the thing looked freaking incredible. I but liked it. The character was like when he became the thing i didn't like it he was so he was just mad at reed richards the whole time but the look was incredible <clears throat> i loved toby kebble before he became doom i that guy is I'm, i got my eye on him because he i think he has something special i think he's a great actor and we're gonna hear a lot from him i toby kebble is gonna kill it isn't it he's gonna have an oscar or two on his mantle but oh but i'm saying like they like we were saying earlier, he was he had, he worked with what he was given. I'm saying as far as him performing the role, he was great. The character wasn't that great. Um, and also, I just so a lot of people say like, okay, the old movies were too comedic, you know, like they're too goofy, over the top, and then they wanted a more serious Fantastic Four. So now we got a more serious Fantastic Four, and everybody's saying it's too serious, it's boring. So I don't understand what people want, like. I think people should make up their minds, but I do agree they need that perfect balance in the middle. So um, I have a few more positives. If you yeah, don't mind. go ahead. You know, I I'm, start... I, those, those were all mine. Okay. <laughs> uh, so as far as Doom goes, uh, I mean, uh, before Victor, uh, he had his moments. Like like when he when he was sarcastic towards uh, the government agent, yeah. it's like you know why don't we send uh, prisoners down to the yeah. other dimension? And then he flicks them off when he yeah. he's like, thank you so much. I thought that was pretty cool. And then when they're in the room drinking, you know, there was something there when they're all, you know, drinking in the dark room and like, you know, we're not going to be, uh, you know, the famous people, you know, who are remembered for this stuff. You know, people before they they were forgotten. They ended up at a bar, you know, all that kind of stuff. I thought that was good. It was. I, I like that, you know. And also, um, you said dark. How about when Doom is walking down the hallway and just the way it's shot, you know, like him walking down, the the hallway goes dark, and you know, you said there was See, a it, score. It felt like a horror movie. Yeah. Even though I agree, Doom looks stupid. Um, I like that when he's walking down the hallway and whatever he can just basically control anything. I guess he's just like blowing people's brains out of their out of their school with his powers. But I thought it looked cool. And a little bit before that, when when they're all like, well, when Reed Richards is, you know, lying down on the table and he's freaking out, you know, he's like, what's going on with me? You know, and everybody's just testing the government's just they don't give a damn about his well-being. They're just testing him. And then Johnny Storm is freaking out, you know, and his father is looking in the other room like, what's going on, son? You know, I thought that was good. I like that. So. But then right after that is when the movie. Yeah, let's sell apart. Let's but um, yeah, so those were our positives. Uh. I mean, I'm sure you guys have quite a, f 
a lot of negatives and i actually have a quite a bit too because overall like i said i recognize the movie is not good it's not a good movie so jake you feel very passionately about these negatives i want to hear why you hate this movie man okay so uh we've kind of touched on a few already but um like i said up until they transported it was a decent movie but it just it felt like someone took a chainsaw to it and tore it apart um and like we said or like we touched on also it felt like uh like the amazing spider-man 2 again when studio execs were like oh i want my idea here i want to direct this scene i think we should do this and then i want my idea over here we should do this um you know i I get that uh big studio like this wants to have their say and uh josh trank may not have much say on set but it's still he's still a director it's still his his vision and he's still going from the script and um so i get it doesn't all fall on him but there's still a big part that falls on him because he is the director of the movie um uh each character i felt was completely underdeveloped i I felt like uh every single one of them was nowhere near what they should have been um especially uh, jamie bell as ben Grimm. Mm-hmm. i thought he was underused so much um you know he takes reed to college or whatever and then he just disappears he's gone yeah and it's just it was stupid and then to go off like when, when he comes back like reed calls him he's like oh i don't want to go i don't want to do this without you so you're telling me that a bunch of kids can go into a government building and transport to another dimension without anybody seeing okay sure that just doesn't it doesn't make sense to me at all while they're drunk exactly it's like why isn't somebody watching over it or how come the security guard is letting him walk in with no badge it just because reed says he's with him it's like it doesn't make any sense i see what you're saying man um uh going off the government aspect i hated i said from the beginning if it has anything to do with the government i'm gonna hate this movie wow i i i just them being controlled not controlled but working with and for and being held by it, well, it turned me knew off that going in from the trailers though well right? kind of but then there was a scene like oh just say yes blah 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 yeah. i wasn't expecting it at the end but the fact that it's the whole government thing again it just turned me off so bad yeah. it, i just hated it i i because that's not what the fantastic four is about they're supposed oh, to learn true. on their own and they're supposed to be on their own and blah 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 um I thought it was a bad, bad use of the incredible cast they had. Um, I thought Miles Teller was underused, almost like Jamie Bell was. You know, that kind of hiatus that he went on for a while. Uh, I mean, each one of those actors could eventually have an Oscar on their mantle at one point. Oh, yeah. And they didn't use them. And to why not have ability. them in every freaking scene? At least one of them. Yeah. It doesn't make sense to me. Mm-hmm. Speaking of Reed's hiatus. How does a guy, I know he's intelligent, but how does he ditch the CIA, the NSA, every government in the world for a he year? He shift his face, it bro. Doesn't, oh but, it doesn't, God. but that doesn't matter. It's like, how can he stay off the grid from the NSA, the CIA, the hey. FBI? It's just- He's the smartest guy in the world. But it, I'm like, as soon as I saw that, I'm like, wait, that's not possible. How can he ditch them from a year? I with having so, no man. experience I mean, of doing so yeah and also i hated too. the whole He's like i hated the old. whole fast forward thing a year yeah. oh it, that yeah. just it is so, did so I. stupid as we talked about the the climax of the movie was absolutely horrible the we were <laughs> promised a big battle between the five of them and we got nowhere near that um the battle from the first fantasy movie was way better yeah it was just uh it was man, bad and <laughs> yeah um i i mean and like you said earlier, the way they kind of came together just didn't make sense. Like it was so rushed yeah. and put together, and like uh, it was just bad. And and it went so quickly. Like it felt like it didn't even feel like they were a team the entire time, but it felt like they were the Fantastic Four for like two minutes. Oh yeah, and that was rushed. It, yeah, it was. It was like it was just bad. Oh, Don't even. God. Oh my God, Doom looks absolutely terrible. God. He looks so bad. I agree with that. He looks, oh my God. And the, the hallway scene was cool. And you know, he's blowing people's heads off. Why didn't he just do that to the four? Yeah. Why didn't he just take them apart with their heads? 
if he's it, that powerful. Stuff like that always has to be ha- happening. I, in the I just don't get it. And, and, and yeah, oh, what did you think about him killing their dad? Uh, I didn't see it coming, but yeah. it's not that it it shocked me. Yeah. Because do you think that was necessary or? No, because it didn't had, didn't do anything. Yeah. There I was mean, nothing. It's not like. Yeah. They're it's like, like completely fine. Yeah, it's not like, like Sewer Johnny said to Doom, like, oh, you killed my father, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. It's like, it was like, as well, they as, had to go fight him right away. As soon as but... the scene was done, it's like, oh, okay, he's dead. See ya. And you weren't yeah. invested. Yeah, it, it wasn't. And even what he said, he's like, stay together. It's like, it didn't do anything because they went off and they were on their own. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, mean, I don't understand why people always live long enough just to get their last words yeah, out. Why didn't just, he die right away? It was so jumbled together and. Uh, it felt like there were sixty different directors for each scene. It did. Um, it it was a, it was just it was a complete mess. I I had tweeted last night uh, while I was walking out of the theater. Um, let's see. I read them. <laughs> I said nothing against Teller, Mara, Jordan, and Bell or anyone else. They did what they could with what they were given, but effing a. And then I also tweeted, I don't even know the last time I was this freaking frustrated after watching a movie. What could be? What could have been? I guess. Wow. So that's how I that's the yeah, can sum up my feelings Man, about this. Before movie. we started this review, I had no idea that you hated the movie that bad. I didn't see your tweets or anything, man. I'm I'm a little hurt right now, man. <laughs> I no, I I was pissed. No, I, no, out of the I, theater, I was pissed. I understand off. though, man. I understand. I I'm pissed too, but for different same reasons, but a little different reasons. Gio, what are some of your negatives, man? I'll touch on some of the ones that Jake just mentioned. Doom's look. He looks stupid as hell, seriously. Like <laughs> You got a guy in Toby Cabell. There's no... You just see his eyes. His mouth doesn't move. There's no facial expression at all. And Doom's eyes in the comics are actual eyes. They're not green dots. Yeah. And Toby Cabell said something interesting. He kind of teased that maybe that was just a Doom bot, which I hope. I would not dismiss that theory, honestly. But I'll get into it with yeah. my negatives. And then uh, Doom's love jealousy. I, I didn't like that. I mean, you know, first he's like, uh, will Sue be there? Yeah. And then That's he sees one of my Sue and too. Reed, you know, off in a distance. He's just like, remain professional, guys, you know, this and that. It's like, come on, don't <laughs> do that. Come on. That was horrible. And where the hell was the chemistry mm-hmm. at between um, – these actors now we saw a little bit of chemistry between uh miles teller and uh, jamie bell um but that's where it ends honestly i was looking forward to kate mara and michael b jordan as adopted siblings i wanted to see that and all they did was touch on it a little bit um well they were hardly in any scenes together yes they were like I mean, I think Michael B. Jordan's looking at his screen, and she's in the back. Yeah, and he just, like, he's looks like, back at her. And say, like, I missed you too, or something. You, or good to see you too. And I'm like, what? Come well, he's kind now. of bitter towards her because her she's da- the chosen his dad. Wonder, yeah. Like she's the favorite in his eyes, you know. Uh, I guess, yeah. And um, I don't know. And you talk about uh, did you? I think you mentioned the lack of character development. <laughs> yeah, I wrote it in the review. Like, okay. So Johnny Storm is uh he's irresponsible and arrogant. He get and then he gets his powers. He's still irresponsible and arrogant. And then his dad dies and he's still irresponsible and somewhat arrogant. And I'm just like And then Miles Teller says we have to do this together and he's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I don't I don't I, I don't know. Um I it's there was so much potential for this cast, you know. Uh, it's one of the few things that I've I had to defend for this film, you know, for the longest time was oh the cast, guys, the cast. It's amazing. Have faith. Come on. They're gonna do great. They did great, but they weren't given a lot. The pacing in the second half was just off. I don't know, like you said, hacksaw what yeah. Hacksaw and, Ridge. Yeah. <laughs> and then not enough action. Like and, and I remember when I first saw the trailer, I was like, wow, it's like is, are they going to have like a training se- session where like Johnny Storm fights, you know, Sue Storm? Because we saw That's what it looked like a in fireball. the trailer. And then like you see Johnny running, uh, coming around the corner. I knew what that was. It was as like, soon as oh, I saw here it. we go. Boom. Yeah, as oh, soon as I saw her, it, it was so predictable. Yeah. I was like, damn it. And then Reed Richards grabs onto the wall and, you know, swings up. They barely the, use the their powers at all like, in this what? movie. So, well, Sue was the only one that used her powers frequently. 
Yeah, she was. Yeah, well, she, she was bubbling people out. around. She had you know, to. Yeah, so I yeah. thought that was cool. Though. Yeah, That's, I like that. That yeah. is a visible woman. Well, yeah, That's Kate what Mara. She does. That's my know? positive, Kate Mara. Yeah, and she's per- <laughs> perfect. But, yeah, um, and and then uh, yeah, just the the battle, the end battle. It's it's terrible, you guys. Like, so, it's so lazy. There's like, I don't know. Like, it's so predictable. Doom gets him down. They're down. Reed Richards finds it in himself to pull himself together literally and just you know gets everyone you know to work together in a matter of he's not seconds. stronger than all of us yeah <laughs> wow like really come on now didn't they use that same line in the first one i swear probably uh, something like that uh, yeah he can't beat us together or something i swear mr fantastic said that in the first movie mm-hmm. yeah it's just i don't know it's 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 all bad like i can go on and on but go ahead yeah i mean even though I do, I did like this movie. I'm, I do recognize it's bad, and I'm hurt by how bad it is, especially the second half. Um, but I'm also hurt at the reaction it's getting. So here's some of my negatives. A lot of the same you guys had. So I was, I was really into the movie until they got back from Planet Zero, and they, you know, that's when it fell apart. And then the time jump to a year what the heck what that didn't make that made no sense it threw the whole movie off you're in this contained story and it's jumping around like i didn't mind the time jump from being a little kid to modern day that made sense but you just jump a a year in time like out of nowhere Mm -hmm. like it just didn't make sense and reed richards goes on the run like that was all horribly handled um they did rush everything felt rushed everything from introducing the characters to bringing them all together it made no sense to let uh you know a guy who can work on cars work on a a huge government science project you know like why are you gonna let just because he's your son he's got the oak i'm pretty sure you all have to be like licensed to work for in those labs and stuff and oh my son's a mechanic he can fix anything let him work on this world changing machine and I don't the doom look was stupid but i don't know if it looked like if if that was the look of the doom bots i think it'd be cool but i want to see toby kevill act i want to see his face he's an incredible actor i don't think it's a doom bot because you saw his his containment suit. the only thing that dismisses that theory is the guy says your body fused with the suit so it probably is him it's most likely him even though i would I would like it to be a Doom bot. It wouldn't make sense. Because well, it doesn't matter because we're not going to see a sequel. I think we will see a sequel. <laughs> I, well, we'll I think we'll, we'll talk about that. that in a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Um, but probably the thing that bothered me the most was you freaking made Victor Von Doom in love with Sue and jealous of her and Reed again. They So one thing they were aiming to do with this movie is differentiate from the old movies. And... I hated that little love triangle in the in the first movies and they brought they tried to bring it back why would you even go near that jake do you know in the comics was doom in love with sue in the comics uh not as doom i think he was as victor i think at some point maybe i think at some point it was washed away and like it just kind of kind of never came back if if that's a quintessential part of the comics where before they got their powers, Victor was in love with Sue. The ones that I've read, uh, that's never touched on. Really? All right. Well, either way, I mean, even if it is a part of the comics, why are you going to do that again and remind people of the old first thing that came to my mind when he said, is Sue going to be there? But Julian McMahon's face. Because that was so stupid. I hate jealousy and love triangles in superhero movies. I hate it. And yeah the lack of showing them using their abilities like if i had a choice to watch like a cut video of the old fantastic four uh characters using all their powers and these fantastic four the old ones were way better as yeah, far as they using, had more teamwork <laughs> using their powers you know and this didn't even make sense like even in the last battle scene was horrible it was so anticlimactic uh i don't know what they were thinking honestly like how do you put this together and then watch it and be like yeah this is good enough let's just put it out i'm surprised because fox has been doing 
incredible late in the last two years. Oh, we'll get into that too. Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, X Men: Days of Future Past, The Kingsman, Maze Runner, Deadpool looks great. Like, how do you ruin this? How do you ruin this movie? You know what it felt like? It felt like someone was taking a knife to a slab of like chicken or something and going, <laughs> "Hey, let's put this scene here. Let's let's put this one there." Yeah, no, oh, it's like oh, I will say one more negative. Why in the flipping world would you not make Sue Storm be part of the expedition oh, and then she gets her oh, powers when it oh, pops back? Absolutely right. That was it's stupid. Like, that as makes hell. no absolute sense. That, that it doesn't make any stupid. sense. What what were they thinking? When that was going on, I was like, What wait, why isn't she with them? I was like, Are they gonna go and then come back and then go again so with stupid. her? Stupid, so idiotic. Yeah. And I could have sworn in the trailers they show her mm -mm. in that dimension. Oh, speaking of the trailers, how many lines, clips, and stuff were Every in the trailers one? that weren't in the movie? Oh, a lot of them. So many. There was no them. baseball at all. Yeah, there was the no one, uh, yeah. him dropping in on the tank and Miles Teller on the computer, like, you know, watching him in there. And Well, that scene of him saying it should only take so yeah, long. Yeah, it was something else. Yeah. Like, sure, trailers, sometimes a little misdirection is fun because it's unpredictable, but they took it to a whole nother level. It ruined part of the movie for me. I just, and the whole thing working for the government thing was, as you can see, I'm not totally blind. Like I, the part of the reason why I like this movie is because I wanted to like it so much and I'm trying to put my fanboys on the side, but the good things that I mentioned, I really think they were great. And it like, it's like half of this movie is completely horrible. And half of this movie is really good in my opinion. I don't think it deserves a freaking nine percent on Rotten Tomatoes. I think it deserves. I, I would. I'll agree with you on that. I it's, think it should be at like fifty percent. And, and that's the thing about Rotten Tomatoes. I really do. Is that sometimes their system is not. They're so really... reactionary, and they, they like, I think, they're like, oh, all these other critics hate it. I must hate it too. Like, I think that's their mindset. And I don't know who all the Rotten Tomato scores are, but. <clears throat> Harlan and Ellis. Be more. Yeah, they are. Be more <laughs> consistent at least. Like if you. Don't give X Men Origins a higher rating, which, in my opinion, is clearly a, a far inferior film. Like, I don't, I don't understand what's going on. But, anyways, so you know our positives and negatives. Uh, we're all pretty much pretty upset by this movie. Please I tell would. us yours in the comments. What yeah, what, what did you guys like about this movie? What did you not like? Do you think it's as bad as the rep it's getting around online? I don't. But yeah, just let us know in the comment section. Now, before we end this, I just want to talk about so. As far as we know, Fox had plans to integrate the Fantastic Four into the X-Men universe. It's a natural fit. They're both Marvel properties. They, they have tons of interaction in the comics, cartoons, and everything. A fear that I have and a reason why I'm still – the reason why I'm so hurt by this movie is because I want to see a Fantastic Four X-Men crossover. It makes perfect sense. And I fear that they're not going to go ahead with the sequel and they're not going to go ahead with the crossover due to – this film's critical reaction and who knows how it's going to do at the box office um jake do you think this is going to actually happen or no um so no matter how much i hate this movie i would like to see a sequel because i would like to see another director take a shot at it and see what it looks like and fix the problems um because now that the fantastic four are together they can kind of just <laughs> go into it and you know um but there's a part of me that believes this uh, complete bomb, I'm gonna call it a bomb, um, is almost a sign of it possibly going back to Marvel. And I think Fantastic Four would do amazing as a Netflix show. It could. But I think it would be I think incredible. If, if, if Marvel gets Fantastic Four back, they're making a movie, bro. But they are so stacked with stuff. It's like maybe Phase Four. A yeah, Marvel Fantastic but Four I mean, movie I would. would so but, ult, but if Fox goes ahead with a sequel, I'm down for it because they have a, a a core cast that just need better direction. Yeah, it's not on them. Keep it's on the director's together. fault. And I mean, like and make a with this movie, movie, like how, why with a director like Josh Trank who did an incredible job on Chronicle and a executive producer writer whatever you want to call him like simon kinberg who's on star wars who's on x-men who's on everything else why aren't you util utilizing them instead of letting your executives take over 
It's like, so if if Simon Kimberg comes back for the sequel, then I'm in. But you need a new director. You for sure. well, I Josh Trank. He's gonna fall off the planet after this, dude. Uh, he's gonna go. He's gonna do like short films or something. He's gonna go back to small stuff. Unfairly, it's not yeah, his fault. So, um, I want to see a sequel. I want to see what they're able to do, but. If I was to say right now, I don't see Fox pushing with a sequel, and I see the the Fantastic Four X Men crossover not happening as of right now. Yeah. Okay. I mean, Gio, how do you feel about this, man? Uh, I'm gonna lay it out on the all on the table right now. Um, I I want to see a sequel from this cast. I like the yes. characters as they are. Toby Cabell, good. Miles Teller, good. Kate Mara, really good. Michael B. Jordan, why not? You know? Awesome. And Re- really good. I mean, yeah. Michael B. Jordan. And because of all the flack he's gotten, cast, it's like... You know. Yeah, yeah I love how he was still like the hothead and still the irresponsible one, but it was very subtle. You know, yeah. it wasn't like crazy over the top. All right, so I want to see them back. And I want the sequel to have more action. I want a better villain. And I want a consistent story. And Fox can do it. They can do it. But it, it seems like in this one, in this film, they kind of lost faith on where Josh Trank was going. I believe his tweet. He had something, uh, an incredible vision for Fantastic Four. Otherwise, they would have never brought him on. Because if anything, Fox is trying to, you know, revitalize this franchise, this property. And. It, it was a perfect matching from when you first heard about it. You know, the guy who did Chronicle is doing Fantastic Four. With a script from the guy who did X-Men Days of Future Past. Right. So it, it was it was a perfect match. And, you, and like, they're going to tell me that Josh Trank just suddenly dropped the ball. Just like that. that. No, there was definitely some studio interference there. They probably wanted it to be... Uh, I mean, I don't know what the studio's vision was, but they they were a little bit too like hesitant on Josh Trank's vision halfway through. Maybe, and they probably weren't liking it. Like this, everything like Fantastic Four, it's so similar to Chronicle. Like it's pretty much the same film. You look at it like the the characters, the story, getting their powers, and yeah, it's pretty much the same thing. So how in the world does Josh Trank go from making a film like Chronicle to making this? When everything is pretty much the same and similar. Like, damn you, Fox. Like, I'm not putting all the blame on Fox. Josh Trank is a director. He has a responsibility to make a film and to adjust and improvise on the spot. Like, rewrites, whatever. Reshoots. But I'm not putting all the blame on Josh Trank here. I'm not. And, you know, it's unfortunate. I, at one point yesterday, I was telling myself like should i be a little bit concerned uh about x-men apocalypse but i'm like no no, no not, not at, at all no. i'm brian not brian singer has the end all be all speaking of brian that. singer why not bring him on for fantastic for, that's Four what two. they were talking about dude let him direct or Four two i know and his, the crossover i know his style isn't fit but what if he brought matthew vaughn back do that that would be he awesome. kicked off the x-men universe all right, again so I definitely yeah. want to see a sequel. I definitely want to see an X Men crossover, especially imagine this cast mixing in with with uh, Fassbender and McCovey and and Ty Sheridan and you know all those the younger cast over mm-hmm. there at, on the X Men side. That would be incredible for them to interact, like Reed Richards and Professor X interacting. I I can't wait to see that on screen one day. Another Johnny, Johnny Storm and Deadpool. Yeah, <laughs> oh, that would be incredible. Another negative I forgot to mention as and like I said and like when it comes down to it I like this movie but I will admit it was boring as all hell. There was no humor, there was no fun, there was no action. So, yes, make a sequel, but the only time I felt a sense of that fun Fantastic 4 was actually the end scene. I mean, I could see how someone could hate that scene. You remember the last scene? Oh, the last When they're talking? When they picked their name? Jake obviously didn't like it. But I actually, I got a little kick out of that, honestly. I felt, that was the only time I felt chemistry between all four of them at once. It was pushed, like, the whole, it was the entire movie. There was no, 
back and forth between yeah. and Ben now, Grimm and, and then Johnny all of a sudden Storm. they have it and now. then all of a sudden they're making no, jokes I agree about with that. Ben Grimm being but a what if, like, what if you didn't see the whole rest of the movie and you just saw that scene like would it like if they had that relationship the whole movie like all four of them you think it would have been better a little bit better maybe but I that I don't yeah. know. I mean, I mean, I guess that's too much. Too I mean, if, yeah, too much. but it's just. Well, yeah, I think, but I think they Jeremy, have. Go ahead. They have to make a sequel. I think. Don't don't let this. Don't let this go. I, incredible cast. Hey, and I'm on Box Office Mojo right now. It's uh, an estimated forty five million. If they pull that in, that is good enough. That's good enough. I just I literally about five minutes ago read a story that said Fantastic Four is struggling to make thirty million. Really. From Variety, so it says from Box Office Mojo, they say Fox's Fantastic Four should win the weekend, even in the headwinds of withering reviews, with an estimated forty-five million. But who knows? the The final numbers are going to be. This is it's Friday today. People haven't even gone and seen the movie yet, so who knows? It yeah, made I, it I made two point seven million last night. As much as we want to talk about the quality of the film, regardless, it's going to come down to money. If this movie loses them money they're not going to make a sequel i think the possibility of the crossover coming first would happen rather than a sequel Mm -mm. but if this movie completely bombs i like you said jake they might scrap it and let it go back to marvel well that that's the best thing that came out of this movie is that it was so bad that marvel might get the rights back (laughs) I don't want that to happen though, because Marvel I don't, has Marvel so much, has to so much of this. I totally agree. I think they could create a beautiful universe with X Men and Fantastic Four. You have all the right characters. I want to see Doctor Doom and Magneto fight. Like, how incredible would that be? Honestly, it'd be pretty cool. But like a- figure out a way to bring Toby Kebbell's face back first. Why not just do this instead of making a Fantastic Four movie? Why don't you just introduce them in an X Men movie? Yeah. Why? Why not? So. Or bring a, one or two of the characters over in an X-Men movie. Why don't do what Marvel's doing with Spider-Man now, now that they got the rights back? Yeah. Third time's a charm, right? Yeah. So, Jake, you, you agree with me and Jacob as to where you, you like this cast, and if a sequel oh, were this happen, cast it, is, it, I, if a sequel were, were to happen, you want to see this cast. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. I, I completely dig the cast. I think it's one of the best casts that was ensembled all year. I mean, all four of them are incredible. All five of them are incredible. Yeah. Now... What would be better moving forward? The Fantastic Four get another shot, a sequel, or them just getting introduced in the X-Men? Like, Fox pushed the Fantastic Four 2 sequel back and pushes up the uh, X-Men Fantastic Four crossover. I think they have to prove themselves as, a, as their own yeah. uh, property first. Yeah, I, I think agree. it's Because in three movies, they haven't done so. No, they haven't. <laughs> so I think they have to prove... Because X-Men's on a completely different level. They're on what Marvel's doing now, with yeah. what Brian Singer's doing, yeah. and so they need to prove themselves as uh, a property in a franchise. I'm not saying that the characters aren't worthy. It's just the whole thing. It's been a mess three times so far. So, um, but I wouldn't be surprised if they push the sequel back and go straight into an X Men crossover. I wouldn't. Be surprised. I say make the sequel first, get it right, let Brian Singer or Matthew Vaughn direct it, make it fun, entertaining more action make the sequel first and then the crossover what about christopher mccrory mm. wouldn't be a bad choice he would it would definitely be fun but who knows and dude. jack reacher he kind of made it a little dark a little bit dark yeah, i wouldn't be so, edge of tomorrow kind of had no. a spin on it uh-huh. if yeah. i'm a director yeah. right now i'm a little scared to touch fantastic four though honestly yeah but as directors but if you save the friend if you, i feel like directors are like if you make it i can great, make it better I can make it better. This is, yeah. you know, I, I can take it. I can't go that. any lower than this. I can only go higher, you know. And just real quick, all of you out there, like, don't be too hard on Josh Trank, okay? This guy has kept quiet through every bit of controversy, every rumor, every criticism. He finally came out on a tweet and said what he needed to say, guys. I think this guy is still a talented director. He still has potential. He can still contribute to Hollywood. So don't like, just like, don't like cast him out yet. This guy can still do something. And, you know, well, I mean, I don't know. This this film, I mean, it just goes to show indie directors and big block, blockbuster studios, you know, sometimes don't they don't mesh together well, you know. They need I to mean, stay out of the way. Take a page out of Marvel's book. Let the director do their job like 
each Marvel movie, that director has his stamp on that movie. Well, even like Josh Josh Whedon to a point was like mentally exhausted. Yeah. Like he let loose after that uh, Age of Ultron came out. You know he. But he kept it together because he had experience with Avengers, whereas Josh Trank was like... But I know. feel like Marvel, they they make sure the director stays cohesive with their universe, but then takes a step back and lets, like, how, like Ant-Man felt like a Peyton Reed, Edgar Wright movie. Like, Guardians of the Galaxy felt like a James Gunn movie. So mm-hmm. they just need to I make sure na- the I have director understands. For Fantastic Four 2, Alex Garland. Uh, Do you know who he is? Machina, right? The director of Ex Machina. Ex Machina? That would be that. interesting because he would definitely make the di- the character dynamics a lot better and develop the characters and have their Darker interactions. Darker sci-fi. Mm-hmm. It, it kind of felt, Fantastic Four felt like that same tone, you know, when just like when they were talking and stuff. At so times, yeah. That, I w- dude, either him or McQuarrie or I would love Singer or Matthew Vaughn to direct it. Neil we'll Blanc see, man. I would love to see someone new not – uh, in the superhero world yet yeah i mean i'm down I mean, with brian singers too. he would i think he would make it great but i want to see someone's take like alex garland or somebody yeah i i i wouldn't yeah i'd be down for that definitely all right so there goes our fantastic four spoilers review as you can see we're all disappointed with the movie um i just want to go around and get your guys a score out of 10 uh i'm curious to hear your scores i mean geo you reviewed the movie already yeah has i'll your, get mine first I... has it changed at all I gave the film a 6.25, which I think is favorable, and I'm going to stick with 6.25, because, like, the first half of the movie is, like, pretty good, and the second half of the movie, there are, there are some very tiny redeemable qualities, but, yeah, I'm, I'm comfortable with my 6.25 out of 10. Jake? Um, I'm going to give it a 3.5 out of 10. Wow. Wow. Here we go. So this is the worst movie of the year for you, huh? So far is the worst movie of the year for me. Wow. Um, and I just wow. witnessed a terrible, terrible movie and vacation. And I think I had a better time watching that than this. I wow. was very, like you had said earlier, I, I was I very, with you on. <laughs> very bored. In Fantastic. I agree. I, it, was, I, it was not fun. I was, it was so bland and... Um, and I contemplated walking out of vacation the other day, and the fact that I'm rating it higher than Fantastic Four is just like, wow. so three and a half. But that might change. I'm gonna go watch it again. I need to watch it again to see, to really see and dig deep into stuff. Um, but for right now, a three and a half out of ten. It just goes to show, man. Movies. Everybody has their own opinion. You know, like you can't. Uh, there's no real way of rating movies. Um, yeah. Even though I liked the movie, I know. I'm not I'm not blind. I know it's not a good movie. Uh and I think I'm going to I want I want to give it a 7, but the critic in me, I'm going to go down to a 6.5 out of 10. I think that's a pretty fair score. All right, well that's going to do it for our Fantastic Four spoilers review. Um yeah, so if you guys liked the movie, if you didn't, let us know in the comment section if you agree with anything we we said let us know if you disagree let us know as well um i'm jacob bartley you can find me on twitter at jake ryan bartley and you can uh check me out on movie talk express uh all the time geo where can they find you at man you can find me on facebook georgia georgia ramos on twitter at georgia ramos 24 and movie talk express jake where can they find you online man uh facebook twitter instagram at the jake berlin facebook and twitter at apocaflix and apocaflix.wordpress.com All right. Thank you all for listening and go see Fantastic Four. Give it a chance. Form your own opinion. Don't listen to these critics online. Have a great day.